your victory is guaranteed. Now, because some of us live a lifestyle of trusting God, we are not surprised when we get the victory. We are never caught off guard when God blesses us, promotes us, sends us better, does for us the good measure, the press, the shaking, and the running. Because sometimes we can do and not do because of pride. It don't have anything to do with God. We trying to show somebody how tough we is. Come on. I'm going to show them I ain't scared. It ain't got nothing to do about being scared. It's got something to do with about obeying God. Are y'all with me? Y'all need to stay with me now. How, how, how do we get here, Pastor? We, we know weapons are forming. But what do we do as God's people? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your what? Heart. Lean not on your own what? Let me ask y'all something. How many folk leaning in the day and time we live in? How many folk do you talk to about the things that are going on and you know it's, it's nothing but they'll understand? They lean. And it's just like God to give us this scripture. Trust the Lord wholeheartedly. He said to a plank, don't lean. Now everything in the world is trying to get us to what? Lean. People in your ear, demons in your ear. Well, you need to consider this. When you make your decision. See, no, you're trying to get me to lean. See, watch this. Not only can I not lean to my own understanding. Uh-oh, Pastor. I can't lean to, to your understanding. You can't afford to lean based upon my understanding. That's when I said, let him that has an ear, let him what? Let him hear. Come on. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your what? Own understanding. Don't let the decisions you make be based upon what you think. Look at somebody and say, get out the way. Get out the way. Shout to somebody, get out the way. Get out the way. When you start a sentence with where well, I think, uh-oh. Uh-oh, you may be going down the wrong path. Watch this. We're going we're gonna to settle this right now. How many have ever... In your life, mess yourself up. Come on, get your hand up high. I want somebody to see you done mess yourself up before. Look at somebody say it was an inside job. Look at somebody else got their hand up and say, I see you know about messing up yourself. Put your hand down based upon what we thought. Am I right? Tell your neighbor the key is. Striving not to do it again or not to do it as often. Because for some of us, it's going to be wonderful if you can go a week without messing up yourself. That's going to be wonderful. Come on, I can't give you no date. It's going to be wonderful if some of us go a week without messing up ourselves. Don't we do it sometimes? Yeah, we do. Well, the reason I did it was because I was thinking or I was feeling that. See, that's wrong for a child of God. And the one thing the world want us to do right now is to be just like them, to think like them, to feel what they feel. But we can't. In all your ways, acknowledge who? Him. And he shall direct what? You. So the weapon is forming, but I'm acknowledging God. I'm allowing God to show me what I need to do to keep this weapon from prospering. Listen, when you see weapons form against children of God, but then you see where they don't prosper, that's because a child of God acknowledged God. And God showed them what to do and what not to do so that the weapon would not, would not prosper against them. Do y'all understand? It ain't that they're more smarter than you. Come on. It's just that he acknowledged God because he recognized that this thing trying to come against my house. Lord, you're going to have to show me what to do 
to keep the house united and in your will. Come on. Because sometimes fussing and yelling at folk does the opposite. You, you need to get them in line. Now you're going to go in there and angry some folk. Come on, you're going to go in there <laughs> and get blasted. Am I right? I did it. I've walked in self. I'm finna straighten all of them out. And everything went chaos. You, you ain't never thought what you do was going to help, but then when it hurt, you were, you were like, what? See, we have to acknowledge him. We have to acknowledge him. So then he going to do what? He going to direct what? Okay. Now, is this true or false? Woo, I, didn't, I said, is this true or false? Has God changed? Does God lie? He said, if I acknowledge him in all my ways, he'll direct my path. He'll show me what to do. He'll show me what I don't need to do. Come on. Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Hebrew 13 and 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and what? Forevermore. So why do some saints feel like God has stopped directing? He's not speaking. See, listen. When God directs, he does so directly and indirectly. Are y'all with me? Because some of us definitely know things are formed. We know that. We're not ignorant. I say some of us know the weapons that are forming against us. Now, a weapon, as you turn to Hebrew, let me see. A weapon is that. It's an apparatus that's used to injure, harm, or kill. A weapon is an apparatus that is used to injure, to harm, or to kill. Now, with that being said, is a knife a weapon? Is a knife a weapon? So the same way a knife is a weapon, you got to understand with that same knife, I can cut my stakes. Come on. This is a mic stand. Am I right? Used for holding a mic. But could it be? If Brother Daniel come up here trying to start something. And I know he like picking up transmissions and all that type of stuff. So, so, so I know he, he's stronger than what he looked like. He got what they call that old man strength. Now he come up here beating me down. I don't have my gun. But could I use this as a weapon and beat his end? I mean, I mean, wear him out. And then folks said, man, he beat Brother Daniel down. With what? Man, Pastor picked up a mic stand and used it as a weapon. See, I'm going somewhere. See, that means we got to be careful and understand that intelligent people know how to form things that would normally not be seen as a weapon, but depending on how they want to use it. So often the, the eventers of evil are not dumb folk. They fashion things use it as weapons against certain people come on that's a weapon now listen for years intelligent evil people created a system that would allow one race to easily obtain but then they created that same system and designed it so that another race would be denied. Same credit score, make the same amount of money, 
but it's been a system designed to use certain things as a weapon against certain people because of the color of their skin. That's evil, but it's also intelligent to create such a thing. And for years, things have prospered against people because they fail to acknowledge God. Come on. Some of y'all didn't like that, but that's just the, that's just the plain truth. I said a system created to deny one person but to make sure another person gets approved. That's a weapon. Come on, that's a weapon. So just because ain't nobody sticking a gun in your face don't mean just because ain't nobody trying to break in your house physically doesn't mean they're not using weapons against your house. Huh? See, so some folk, when it comes to weapon forming, not only are they ignorant to what they're fighting, when it is revealed what they're fighting, they have no clue to defeat it or how to stop it from prospering. You don't get this everywhere. And see, so what folk want you to do is that you got to be on the right or the left. Oh, you on the right? I'm on the left and I hate you for being on the right. Well, as much as you hate me for being on the right, I hate you just as much for being on the left. Why can't the church just do what God say do? Can I, can I really share something with y'all? And it was by design, but the moment the government made the virus political, it was never about helping anybody. Such things should not be made political when it involves the health of people. Come on, that shouldn't be political. Come on. It should just be about what? Helping mankind. But see, evil folk again. Boy, I'm trying to come in. You really got to understand this. They'll take this right here. Study it. Do you hear me? Here's the thing. There are evil people that study this more than you do. So that they learn to talk what you want to hear. What did the devil do? He was up there in that wilderness. Come on. Trying to use the word, watch this, against the word. Are you the word? No. So what makes you think he won't use the word against you? He quoted the word to Jesus. Come on. So in all of this, there are people studying Christians. How they think, what they believe, why they believe what they believe. Let's isolate them. Let's put a few things in this equation based upon what they believe. And let's make them get in a certain, a certain place. And they'll stay there if you use this terminology. Come on. I'm, I'm going to show you in the end how powerful it can be. Oh, Lord, where y'all at? Uh, Hebrew 11, 6. Lord, have mercy. But without faith, it is impossible to please who? Him or God. For he who comes to God must believe that he what? He is. That he is a rewarder of those who diligently what? Seek him. Now, first, when you come to him, you got to believe that he what? He is. This is when it's going to get important. You got to know when you come into him, seeking him, acknowledge him, you got to know he's sovereign. You got to know he exists as being who he has said he is. Mm -hmm. 
Come on. And then he becomes a rewarder of those who diligently what? Seek him. Listen, one reward he gives us is that he know when weapons are forming and he reward us with instructions. He rewards us with directions that cause the weapon not to prosper even though it formed. Come on, that's part of the reward of diligently seeking him. 